Hey everybody, this is Jordan. Welcome to the first bonus feature for the Collage Media and Exploration Workshop. What we're going to be doing in this video is actually going to be working on the front cover, the back cover, and the spine of the journal that we're going to be using for this workshop. I decided to start a new one just for this so that I'd have a place to have everything all contained in one spot. Um, the first thing that I want to mention is that I use composition notebooks and I'm going to be showing you how you can use them as well. I like them just as well as I have any other kind of notebook that I've tried and this actually seems to work the best for me personally. So the first thing about this is that this is just a regular composition notebook and it actually already has some stuff written in it. A few things like a few just a few pages and stuff but I didn't have a brand new one and actually the writing will just add another layer to our work so let's get started I am putting a piece of newspaper between the cover and the rest of the book so that there's no paint that drips down and makes the other pages stick together and I did a palette, and I have a light gray, a dark medium gray, black, like a burnt orange rust color, a yellow mustard type color, and some white. And I also have some portfolio oil pastels in rust, yellow, and black. And I have a few other supplies over here that I might be using as well. So I actually started it off already by using some Fresco Tempera paint as just the very first base layer. It was kind of like a slippery texture before and now it's a bit more chalky, which works a lot better for the techniques that we're going to be putting on top of it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put down a layer of color. And out of all my colors, I'm going to start with a light color and build darker colors up from there. So, I'm going to take a paintbrush and I think I'm going to do a light gray. And I'm only going to be working on the cover part right here first. I'm not going to work on the spine or anything because what I normally do is I will make it stand out from the rest of the book. So maybe if I'm using all these warm type colors, I might use a teal for the spine. I just like it to pop. And I'm being extremely rough with how I put this down. I don't want it to be perfect because the way my layers work, it looks better if they're not perfect. I'm just kind of trying to cover up some of the blank spots. add some different shapes in different directions. And whatever I'm doing on the front here, I will repeat on the back. So I may or may not show you me doing that. Okay. I'm going to take a regular piece of white printer paper from over here. It's actually behind the computer. And I'm actually going to just lay it down and press over top. And I'm just going to lift the color up. So this is what I get in return. And it just kind of like adds more texture to the piece itself. And it also helps it dry faster. So that's a plus as well. I think I'm going to go next with a kind of rust oil pastel. These are portfolio oil pastels and I got them at Staples. They're really inexpensive and I love the way they look. And since the background is still not all the way dry, it kind of like adds this kind of texture where it shows through as well, which I think is cool. Which it's fine to do that as long as like the paint that you pick up you just wipe off like that. 
and the kind of texture that it adds, I think you can see how it's multicolored. It's kind of, yeah. And I'm actually just going to go over it with my fingers and just kind of like smooth it in a little bit. And now I am going to be using a palette knife and I'm going to go over top of this with, I think, yellow. Now this is a soft body acrylic, it's Liquitex. Um, I don't normally use artist grade acrylics or anything, but these were on sale. And I will normally go for whatever is somewhat cheap, or if it's on sale at a really good price, I will buy it. It's just because of my limited budget. But you can do any of these techniques with any kind of paints that you want. For example, the gray, the two kinds of gray and the orange are all craft paints. And the black is a temper paint. And I like to mix the different kinds too, which makes media. That's what I, my excuse. So I'm going to add that over there with that. And you can kind of see how it's like that, how it's different. has an interesting texture in my opinion. And it also depends on how you use your palette knife as well. And you can add, I'm um, like making some little scratches in the wet paint as it, before it dries, obviously because it's wet, but, and it adds just that much more texture. And I'm just doing it with my palette knife. So there's that. I don't really plan ahead of time, so I don't really know what I'm doing for this in particular. I think I'm going to use my circle template that I actually made on a Cricut. I just cut various circles on this just piece of cardstock and I just use it for a stencil and I use this a lot I love the effect that it gives and if I don't really like the way something's turning out it covers it up brilliantly so I'm going to use my favorite paintbrush here it's a 245B shader and I just love it. I really do. I use it a lot. And I'm going to use this burnt orange rust colored paint. And I'm just going to go over all these circles. And I've also done it before where I have done multicolored circles or I've just put a few circles with random in random spots. But for this one, I think I'm just going to cover the whole thing. And then what I had down before will just be what's in the background. Also, I just like the way that the circles look in general. I just think that they're really... graphic in nature and that kind of adds more to my style than a lot of things that I've seen. When I'm painting inside these stencils also I'm not super careful to either make the strokes inside look amazing and I'm also not concerned about um, any paint seeping underneath the stencil. If you are more neat 
in your style, then you could be a little more careful. But if paint seeps underneath, it's not a big deal for me because I kind of like the way it looks. It kind of like shifted off culture and I just shifted it back. And the last one here. And then when we lift it up, that's what we've got. Back here. And I'm just going to put the leftover paint onto like the background. I have like a newspaper sheet protecting my background. Eventually, after so long, they build on top of each other and create really interesting backgrounds. Let's see if I can find one for you guys here so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Hmm. Something like this. Or... this. If you just have something left over on your brush or your stamp, you just go like that. And I'll actually show you another thing you can do. You can take your sheet and when you have this, I like it especially with the circles because it does seep underneath sometimes. If you go on top and then you lift it up, you get the little leftover pieces. I'll actually try and do it again with this piece that I did on video for you guys. I'll do it again with this one. I have another layer. You can kind of see it a little bit better there. And these papers can be torn up and used for collage on actual art journal pages or covers if you prefer. So that's what that looks like so far. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my black portfolio of oil pastel and I'm actually going to outline these circles that I put down. And I am not being careful at all about this. I'm actually purposely trying to get some of them to look kind of wonky, smaller, bigger than the circles themselves, a little more oval. Because I know that I can't draw a perfect circle, even when I'm trying to trace, I never really try anyways. And I just like the way it looks better. And I'm just kind of like smudging it a little bit. To kind of cling to the texture of the background. And I don't know if you can see this, but in certain areas where I scratch into the paint, it's actually showing through and giving it even more texture even after several layers so I love that effect. Okay. and what do I want to do now? I think hmm. Let's use a stamp. I made this stamp from a piece of foam that I cut into a strip and then I used a hole puncher to punch the holes on the ends and I actually just adhered it because it was self-adhesive foam. I adhered it to a piece of cardboard from a cereal box and it creates like a border -like type stamp that I'm going to use around the edges here. Get me a paintbrush. And I'm going to use the dark gray this time. I used the light gray. Now I'm going to use the dark gray. So you see that? It's kind of translucent. Semi. 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 I don't know. It's kind of semi-translucent, so it can show through a little bit the layers of the previous 
players. Also, I think that has a lot to do with the fact that this is a somewhat new stamp. I haven't used it. Well, it's kind of old. I made it a little while ago, but I haven't used it a whole lot. So it's still, I can still feel the texture of the foam. And you can still kind of see it too. But in a minute, I'll show you after I've used a stamp so many times, even when it's made from foam, it will start to harden. The paint will dry on top of it since I don't wash it off. And it'll create a more defined image. Which I think is extremely interesting. Perhaps I'll use that stamp as well, so you can see kind of the difference in the textures created. Okay, and I just went around the entire outside, and you can see I created kind of a border to kind of anchor everything in. Okay, and I'll show you the other stamp now. This is my little box of stamps. I actually created stamps on the sides of my box. And I'll put found oh my found textures and stuff like that in there as well. Like oh, this bubble wrap. The paint when it dries on there it gets all crunchy or whatever and it just like it flakes off but here is another stamp that I did and you can I don't know if you can really see how much paint stuck to there but if I like crack it that's what happens because there's so many layers of paint built up there soon I'm probably gonna have to remake this stamp because it's just getting kind of difficult to use. But I'll show you the difference in texture. I'm going to use black for this. Black acrylic paint. Temper paint. So I use this and I just go right over the top. And like I said, I'm not really too careful about where I put the paint on this thing because I will have to remake them eventually, most likely. And I don't know if you can see, but that's a little more harder in texture. You can see that the piece used to make the stamp has a little more or a little less give to it while the border has a little bit more. Something that I like to encourage when I'm using stamps as well is to be extremely random with where you put it and also to do offset stamps where you have part of the stamp on the page and part of it off of the page. And I think that really gives it more of a flow because what happens is it makes it feel like that's not the edge of the page. It makes it feel like there should be more, that there's more to it than just what's right there. And then the off stamps are just where you will go several times with just one stamp or one application of paint. That's what that looks like. And now I am just going to add a little bit more, I think, depth to the edges where I put the background or the border because my border is not really standing out as much as I would like it to. So I'm actually going to do it in a different color. Excuse me. trying to find a paintbrush here. Okay. 
I have a lot of different paint brushes for doing different things, so. I think I'm gonna use yellow. And I'm just gonna go around the edges. And I'm gonna start off by just painting a border. And I'm not going to be too careful about how I do this because as you can see the layers of stamping through the last layer are already sort of running together with the paint. That also has something to do with the fact that I didn't let it dry completely. But as that's sort of my style with the layers kind of combining into one, I don't worry too much about that. I'm going to make a fairly thick border around the piece. I'm going to go at the bottom as well. And I kind of encase this middle part and created almost like a frame around it. And then from there, I'm just going to add a little bit more texture and depth around the edges by adding more dots in a kind of um, it seems like I'm using a lot of circles on this page. So with the circle stencil and the stamp. So I like to repeat that when I notice that it's happening naturally. I like to repeat it on purpose. I was getting most of the paint off of my bubble wrap. And I'm just going to do that around the edges. But what I'm going to try first, I don't know if it'll work, is stamping into the wet paint. Yeah, I wish it was a little more textured than that. You can kind of see it, like here. That kind of pulled through. But I think I would prefer... Let's see what it did to my... Bubble wrap. I think I would prefer to have some more color on there. Except I'm not going to put color. I'm going to put white. onto it. So I'll use some of this. And I don't need to be um, covering the whole piece of it because I am not going to go over the entire thing. I'm just going to go around the edges. And this is kind of mixing with the yellow that I picked up on the last layer or from attempting to do that. It's not, it's okay. I'm going to leave that alone and just let it do what it wants to do. That's part of my style as well, is just letting the art evolve on its own and create its own unique, in a sense, its own style. Okay. And as you can see, I really do, as you can see, like, how it's sort of turning out. I really do enjoy the way that that's looking. So, okay. Now I'll add it here as well. And I'm also allowing some of the bubble wrap to go off of the border and into the center to kind of create the same feeling that it's one piece. I never like to make anything seem too by itself or alone because if it is, then it's almost like it's separated. 
and I don't like the way that makes something look. A bunch of paint on my shirt. And then, as the very final layer of paint on this page, or type of, that type of media on this page, I'm going to use some black pastel, and I'm going to go around that piece a little bit, and then maybe a little bit around the outside edge as well, to help further unify that. And once again, I'm just going to wipe the paint off of that oil pastel. And it's perfectly normal again. Okay. So that's what that looks like. Now, I am not yet finished with this page because, or it's more the cover, it's not really a page. But I'm not yet finished with this yet. So let me kind of pick up a little bit more with this just to kind of it adds another layer to this and it helps this dry faster. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to be adding a title. And I'm going to think about what I want this to be. What I want to be the overall message for this piece in general. I'm going to look mostly for the exploration part of the name. The name of the workshop is obviously the Collage Media and Exploration Workshop. But I think I, most am, I am most fond of the exp exploration part. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I have this. It's a big shoebox. And inside are a ton of letters that I have cut from magazines or newspapers or wherever I can find that type of thing. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take the pieces out of here and this my mom says it reminds her a lot of, like, a ransom note type thing. And I always find that humorous because that is not what I was looking for at all. But, it's okay. Or, instead of this, I normally will just, like, rummage through that box until I find what I need. But, for this purpose, I'm going to use these little bags. I actually sorted some of them out into these bags. And that kind of will help me go a bit faster for the purpose of this video. That you won't get as bored just watching me search for letters. And I like to make sure that they're fairly different. I don't like them to all be the same. That's a personal preference, but, oh my, that's stuck. I don't really know where I want it to stick, but. X, I need a, a P. If these get all unorganized or whatever, that's okay. I don't really care. I'll just come back and fix it afterwards. Okay. I have to make sure I close these bags, though. That's one of the downfalls. I'd rather have, like, a big organized type thing, but this will have to do for now. That's I.
but you can imagine how long this would take if I had a longer title. I've actually done extremely long titles with this type of thing before though. And I think that it's fun and exciting, but I wouldn't want to make you guys have to watch that. So. Now I need a tea. I just hope that these, I really don't, I don't mind if they get all mixed up. But I'd rather they not, because if they get all mixed up, then I'll have a hard time, just like right now. So, now I just need an I and an O. I'll get the O first, because I'm closer here. Let's use the big gray O. And one of the things about this, it's just like an OCD habit of mine is that if I do a title like this, I cannot mix the black and white stuff with the color stuff. And I can't mix the colored stuff with the black and white stuff. That is purely my OCD habit. And I wish it was not that bad. It is. I don't have OCD really, but I have OCD tendencies. Like if I buy a book series and one of the books is different from a different manufacturer or whatnot, it will freak me out because I don't like it. <laughs> it just, I'm just going to think about putting this up the edge because one, it's not really fitting this way. And two, I think it kind of fits the theme exploration. I'm used to putting titles right across the edge here, but if I explore and try to make something a bit different, not right I like it I'm gonna use some rose art washable school glue to actually adhere my stuff down I've been using this a lot more than my crap glues lately one because it's cheaper and two because I am a lot of times too in a hurry or don't want to get the stuff out because other stuff requires a paintbrush and that's just not my style I don't know it's just like I have Mod Podge I actually have some right in front of me it's like right here but I a lot of times will just not do things because I just would rather find a quicker alternative. And I also have some Aline's Tacky Glue. It's not right here. But I use that sometimes, but only when I'm trying to adhere heavier stuff because it's a lot thicker. And for me, personally, I don't find it as easy to use. I mostly use this because of the ease of use. It's a lot more consistent and if it works just as well and it's cheaper I don't understand I don't really know why I would spend more money on other stuff of course I do need to use up what I have but I will and because I did this in such a time-consuming way, just the cover. I'm not going to show you the back because it's basically I'm going to be doing it in the exact same way. I'm going to go through all the same techniques and it, that way it kind of looks better as a whole. I will do the spine with you guys though. 
So there is that. It's my exploration journal. Um, I'll show you an example. Here is where I've done that before, where I did a journal, and I actually did the, the spine in a different color. This is a journal that I was experimenting with thicker pages, gluing pages together. I found that I don't like it as much as just the single pages, because they get to be too stiff. I think there's a such thing as too stiff of a page. But there's the front and there's the back and you see how it really just goes together you know because I did the back the exact same way as I did the front so I'm gonna do the back exactly the same way but before we do that let's do the spine I am going to do this with this teal craft smart paint it's called Ocean Breeze. This is one of my favorite colors, but it's running out. But I like to do cool colored spines on warm colored uh, front pages and warm spines on cool pages like I did on this one. I could have done green, like a lime green or like a purple, but I really just want to do this green. So. Let me get my favorite paintbrush out of the water here, where I have it sitting. Now I'm going to get the water out of it. And then I'm going to, the way I have to do these, it's a little bit different. So let me move this up a little bit, sorry about that. What I'm going to do is I have to, since the spine is on the front and the back, I kind of have to do it kind of while s having it set up or while holding it. So I love painting the spines. Honestly, it's my favorite part. I don't know why. But I think it just like adds like a amazing hint of like color in the contrast. Just seeing it pop like right in your face is amazing. Okay, and then I'm going to go along the top here. You see some of my orange that got on there and cover that up. And then I'm going to hold it like this and do the back. And I'm going to go, it's okay if I go, oh, wow, that's nice. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Hopefully the pages don't stick together. But I'm going to have it, it's okay if it kind of goes over into here, because I'm going to be fixing that anyway with another, with a, the same as the front, so it matches. But, that would be that. Finishing off a few little last pieces. And that would be my exploration journal made especially for this workshop well I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you next time